I extend a very warm welcome to all of you once again. I would request you to please keep your mobile phones on the silent mode. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. There were so many phones ringing in the morning. I would request you to please keep them on the silent mode. So, we witnessed, ladies and gentlemen, as the day started, the Central Board of Film Certification presentation on the theme of We, the Offended, by Ms. Ira Bhaskar, Professor of Cinema Studies, School of Arts and Aesthetics, JNU. And that was indeed a very important and insightful session which dealt with sensitive questions of identity, of caste, religion, gender, questions of freedom of expression, social responsibility, and responses to social change, and also the fact that are we really keeping up with social change? Films create narrative worlds and works with characters that are crucial representatives of the society is something we learned from her, uh, her address. And another question is the question of stereotypes. Are they questioned? or are they challenged? Cinema is responsible for opening society and catalyzing dialogue. And also the fact that we learned, ladies and gentlemen, today that it is important to encourage debate and discussion other than just reacting or giving in to the agenda of political groups who create controversy in order to uh, maybe gain political mileage. Keeping with the same theme, ladies and gentlemen, we're now taking it to a panel discussion with very eminent dignitaries that we have on the panel. We have amongst us, ladies and gentlemen, and I would request this legendary personality to kindly join us on stage and grace the dais. First of all, may I welcome Mr. Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra to join us on stage. Writer. He is best known for writing, producing, and directing Rangi Basanti in 2006. Warm welcome, sir. We thank you so much for gracing the occasion with your presence. And uh, so, as I was talking about Rangi Basanti, the 2006 film for which he won the Best Director Award at the 2006 National Film Awards and received the BAFTA Award nomination for Best Foreign Language Film, Rangi Basanti, ladies and gentlemen, was India's entry to the Oscars. He is also the writer and director of the film Delhi 6, the 2009 film Delhi 6, uh, the best film on national integration, and was uh, showcased, which won, uh, I'm sorry, which was showcased at the very prestigious and one of the most critical Venice Film Festival. Delhi 6 also got a national award, ladies and gentlemen. His debut film was the 2001 film Ux and got critical acclaim and was touted as ahead of its time. His next work to be released soon in July 2013 is Bhag Milka Bhag, inspired on the true life of the legendary sportsperson Milka Singh. It's got an ensemble of national and international cast and he's also currently working on Mirza, which is written by Gulzarji. So once again, a warm welcome to Mr. Rakesh Ravakashan. May I now extend a warm welcome as I invite on stage Mr. Rajendra Singh Babu, please welcome him on stage with a roaring round of applause. Another very esteemed filmmaker, ladies and gentlemen, S.V. Rajendra Singh Babuji is a Kannad filmmaker and producer. He was born and brought up in Mysore. His father, late Shankar Singh, was one of the great producers in Kannad film industry and has produced many films under the banner Mahatma Pictures, Mysore. Rajendra Singh Babuji has made movies in different genres, genres and he has written and directed love stories, war, suspense thrillers and comedy movies and many of his films have been adapted from novels or short stories. He's not only famous uh, in Karnataka but also across India. He has won numerous awards for his films and has also directed movies in the Hindi, Meri Awas Suno, Hema Malini's Sharara, Aap Ka Darya, uh, which starred Dilip Kumar and Rekhaji and Telugu and there were many many uh, movies of course that he's made in Telugu languages. He is the winner of the President's Rajat Kamal Award for the Best Film and Director uh, Prize for movies Antha, another path-breaking film Bandana, Muttina Hara and Mungarina uh, Munga Minchu. He's also won many state awards for his films and has been honored with Uttana Kangal prestigious award given by the Karnataka state government to a film personality on the lines of Dada Sahib Falke award in Karnataka. Once again, a warm welcome, and ladies and gentlemen, to Rajendra Singh Babuji. Warm welcome, sir. May I now 
call on stage once again. He was here with us yesterday, the director of Pyar Ka Panchnama and Akashwani, Mr. Love Ranjan with a roaring round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, he's already very popular amongst all of us. Um, we would like to really thank him for his signif significant views that he actually voiced on the panel discussion yesterday. We thank you very much. Nayak, managing partner, Nayak, Nayak and company. Please welcome him with a very, very big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Nayak, Nayak company, Nayak, Nayak and company is one of the largest media and entertainment firms in India. Uh, it's been a part of the controversy around uh, films like Arakshan. Dirty Picture and films Kya Super Cool Hai Hum, Jannat, Kite, Son of Sardar and also the issue with Yash Raj films, uh, also Ek Thi Dayan, though we've been talking about Ek Thi Dayan since yesterday, uh, but this firm actually has been uh, advising also the Zanjeev remake issue they have been a part of. The company has been regarded internationally as one of the best media and entertainment firms of the country. They've worked on more than 100 films and advised most of the Indian and international studios like Warner. Uh, they have recently concluded 24 Endemol and uh, they've also written a book that was recently released by the Ministry of uh, Information and Broadcasting, Rule and Rule of Law. And he's also on the Committee of Copyright Law. He also represents Prakash Javayakon, Reliance, Big Entertainment, BBC, Warner. <laughs> and amongst the audience, ladies and gentlemen, we also have uh, with us Mr. Vinayak Azad. He's... <laughs> Nazina Bhasko is a professor of Cinema Studies School of Arts and Aesthetics. <laughs> and also on the board of CBFC, she was introduced this morning and we also have with us Ms. Pankaja Thakur who is going to be moderating this session. She is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Central Board of Film Certification. And now that uh, the eminent panelists are on stage, I'm going to request Ms. Uh, Nirupama Kotru, the Director of Films, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to kindly join us on stage to welcome the esteemed panel, please welcome the lady with a round of applause, Ms. Nirupa Makotu, Director of Films, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Government of India. <laughs> Mr. Ramir Nayak, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. <laughs> Mr. Rajendra Singh Babu. And of course, Mr. Love Ranjan. And the ladies, of course, Ms. Ira Bhaskar. And a very, very eminent moderator, Ms. Pankaja Thakur, CEO, CBFC. A huge round of applause for our moderator. Thank you, Ms. Kotru, for doing the honors. And I'm going to request our moderator to now take over, please. Ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome the panelists and the audience. Thank you so much for coming uh, for this panel discussion, which is so, so relevant uh, because of the cases that we've had recently, uh, uh, Arakshan, uh, Visharupam, in fact, today we have among us one of the panelists, Mr. Rakesh Prakash Mehra, whose film Delhi 6 also went through a lot of turmoil. Uh, and uh, along with the film, he also uh, went through uh, a lot of things that he will himself talk to you about. And uh, so this panel discussion uh, also has Mr. Amit Naik, who's uh, actually an expert because um, He's uh, represented all these films uh, in various court cases. So we would like to know from him what the legal possession is. Of course, we are discussing sensibilities and the public view is very important because uh, sensibilities are about emotions and emotions are very important. The films are about emotions. But we have to remember that when two uh, different sides of the emotions clash, then what is most important is to keep in mind what is the law of the land. What does the constitution of this uh, country say? And that is the most important thing. And Mr. Amit Naik hopefully will tell us about uh, uh, what uh, the law of the land regarding a particular issue is and what the constitution of India says about it. And uh, then there are different filmmakers who for their own films uh, have faced this uh, sensibility issue, whether it was regarding 
religion, caste, uh, gender, in fact, even language uh, uh, sensibilities have sometimes been offended. So I, without wasting any time, I would like to uh, uh, request, in fact, uh, Mr. Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra, because he's with Delhi 6. Um, I have seen the file, sir. I was not there that time. Uh, Mr. Vinay Kazad was a regional officer that time. And that's a time when it actually began. I think yours was one of the first films which uh, went to SCST Commission. I think you were called by them. You had to make an appearance and the whole story. I don't think people know about those things. What a filmmaker has to uh, go through when he uses a particular caste to God, a jati suchak shabd. That's what we call. Uh, without, if, even in the context, if it is used still, um, he has to face problems. So Mr. Mehra will talk about it. Uh, please, sir. Uh, nothing. Uh, we were just trying to make a movie, which was, uh, which one failed should should make, and that was about it. And uh, the intention was correct. The the. The, the what we were trying to say, what I was trying to say as a filmmaker, uh, was sincere, honest, had a mature point of view. It wasn't just a fantasy. And uh, we got an approval from Censor Board, and we were on our way to release the film. And the film got released, and then a few prints got burned. Uh, few life-threatening phone calls came and stuff like that. And then uh, the commission said, Abhi Dilli Aja. Uh, by the time we landed back in Bombay, we were called back again and again. And uh, one had to retrospect and say, maybe we've crossed the line. Uh, you know, uh, we filmmakers, uh, in the old guise of freedom of expression and creativity, we do cross the line. And uh, so I had a lot of thinking, I had to get my head around it and say, Yeah, I think which Galti to Nio Way. When I was there, uh, we used to talk a lot. Then uh, I realized, Nay, ye to arm twisting hai. So now we are not going to give in, come what may. So in the third appearance, I said, do whatever you guys want to do. The, as a citizen of the country, I would have apologized, but as a Thani, and I will do what I have to do. So we took uh, uh, the course of law of the land and the law of the land supported us, and we won the case. So, uh, it is, uh, I would not say, it's not a complaint, it's not fortunate or unfortunate. Uh, uh, that is how uh, the jungle is in which we are living. And uh, anybody gets up and, and especially with the kind of country we are in, which is totally and completely divided with caste, creed, religion, so much of gender bias. So, uh, this is an amazing platform. I have to congratulate everybody. So, that, what, moving forward, so that was history. Uh, moving forward, I would say, 100 years of cinema, whatever amazing platform. Let's uh, use this and take a call. Uh, as a filmmaker, to have a kind of self-censorship in your work, so that, uh, uh, you know, if there is a law and, and there's a law and order that doesn't mean you have to break it. 
you have to be a law abiding citizen so there is a moral code of conduct that doesn't mean you have to break it in the name of uh, creative expression so as a filmmaker i can speak for myself that uh, we need to uh, clearly be honest with our thoughts and transparent and be responsible with them uh on the part of the government i think there is uh we are no more a just born nation we are now quite young and there needs to be uh, a sense of maturity a sense of growing up in the outlook uh, and whatever needs to be done should be done and thirdly i would say we should not uh, you know like uh, you advertise mcdowell number 1 aur bolte ho pani pi lo it's pani to hai nahi wo surrogate hai to actually you are advertising the alcohol similarly in movies also we do a lot of such things you know in us uh, surrogately we uh, exploit especially gender bias so all that needs to be uh, addressed and addressed by thought leaders of the country it's not a fight it's we have to be very true and we have to say what do we want our children to consume and if the answer is that i want my daughter to consume this it's fine and uh, you'll get the answers and uh, I think with that, thank you, uh, I'll thank hand you. you back. Thank you, sir. And I, I really want a huge round of applause for Mr. Mehra for for admitting for the first time this must be a historic day, historic panel discussion where a filmmaker comes and says that we do tend to cross the thin line sometimes. Till now, uh, everybody uh, and uh, in, including all the uh, filmmakers who came yesterday and day before, they all felt that somehow you know people are not trying to understand what they're trying to say, trying to curb their creative freedom of expression. But for the first time, a filmmaker has said that yes, we filmmakers do tend to take liberties with our freedom of expression, and I'm I'm really so happy and thank you so much for being so honest, Mr. Mehra. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, Mr. Binay Kazar, who was a regional officer that time when the trend started. Uh, this trend of, uh, of uh, you know opposing the mention of caste words in film, because as uh, Ms. Ira uh, Bhaskar uh, presented uh, her presentation in the morning showed that in 70s and 60s we had films where the caste words were openly mentioned. Because you couldn't make a film on caste system without mentioning the caste words. But the, the thing, uh, it, a trend started uh, during uh, I think late 90s, and uh, I remember Delhi Six. I read in the newspaper. I was not in the board that time. That the word sunat was used in a song, uh, and uh, uh, okay, could you please clarify? Uh, what you're talking about was a movie called Aaj Nachle, where uh, Mohabra. मोहल्ले में कैसी हाहाकार है मोची भी समझे खुद को सुना देता है सफाई कर्मचारी इन दिल्ली द कैन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट शी रिसीव by the hands of a negative guy who happens to be a cop so they had issues with regard to the treatment and our stand was that you have to look at the movie as a whole i mean is the movie trying to propagate uh, that kind of treatment no that in fact it was to the contrary so but nonetheless they were showing us the uh, law and say that no representation or uh, no uh, bad representation can be done and they were asking us point blank have you done it or not I understand was that I mean you look at the picture as a whole I mean just you can't pick just one part of a thing and uh, you know try to say that you are committed a crime by showing it until unless you show it how else are you going to show that it is wrong so that that was the issue what happened in Ajay Nachle and also there was another in the Kamine there was 
some song. Yeah. Uh, in Kamine, there, there was a song which became a big hit, uh, uh, Tara Rara. And in, in that, in the lyrics, there was this uh, word which, you know, hardly anybody noticed at the, uh, in the beginning, uh, called Tara Rara Rara Teli Ka te. So, uh, a particular, uh, some uh, political leader belonging to the Teli community had an objection that this is derogatory to the cast. And uh, this was before the movie released. And uh, uh, at that time, we, I got feelers from the ministry as well that you know, there, there's a controversy which is doing. So I had at that time talked to Gulzar Saab as well as uh, uh, Vishal. So uh, and I had, I mean, uh, we had allowed that thing because I, I personally didn't think it was uh, anything derogatory. Teli ka tel, per se, I don't think most people would consider derogatory. Neither was it in any context. It was just a, you know, a passing lyric. But nonetheless, I advised them uh, and I told them what the commercial consequences can be if there is a controversy, particularly in certain areas. And they have voluntarily, uh, you know, modified it. They made Teli to, into Teli. Teli ka te. So uh, that, that's the way things work. You know, I mean, many a times, logic takes a backseat at times. It's, it's or maybe for commercial consideration or for whatever other reasons. So, yeah, this, this is not So, for an Oscar winning lyricist like, uh, like Shri Gunzal, for he had to change his lyrics only because uh, there, there was objection to the word Teli ka tel, and it had to be changed from Teli ka tel to Tilli ka tel uh, when the film was released. Absolutely. And, and even the, uh, in Aja Nachle also the word, the cast word has changed. In fact, with that, with hindsight, perhaps I, I, I would admit that maybe I overlooked the fact, you know, because the movie was totally non-controversial, the movie was not about caste system or anything, it, it was a uh, entertainer, you know, and uh, so somehow with hindsight, maybe I should have been a little bit more vigilant, because uh, although it's a Muhavra, which, you know, there are so many Muhavras in, in Hindi language, like Sosunal, Sosunal, Ki, and Kaha Raja Bho, Kaha Gandhu Teli. So these are all uh, derived from caste in some way or the other. And But yes, I mean, uh, thinking it, it from another level, yes, maybe it can be considered offensive. And maybe Why do you think you overlooked? Sorry, because this Mahabra is there in all Hindi textbooks. Yes, it is there. Uh, Raja perhaps, why don't they remove it from the textbook first? Perhaps that is why I overlooked, because I was so accustomed to these uh, kind of Mahabras being used that I did not even, you know, actually go into the depth of the implication. But then when this issue was raised, uh, this issue was not raised when the song was playing for a month before the movie was released. This issue came up on the day the movie was released uh, in 2010. Uh, so that time again I requested uh, uh, Mr. Yes, Chopra whether it would be possible because the prints had already been released. Was it removed finally? Yes, it was. It was removed. So it was, it was removed, removed finally. Yeah. Thank you so much. Primarily because of the commercial considerations. Thank you so much. It continued right till when I joined Dhobi Ghat came. Uh, Dhobi Ghat uh, 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 again had the same problem in the, the one particular community said that Dhobi Ghat, you cannot name a film Dhobi Ghat uh, because you cannot mention the caste word there. Finally, it was uh, sorted out um, it, uh, between the producer and uh, the community before the film came for certification. So we didn't have a problem because it was kind of mutually sorted out. Yes, Amit, you wanted to say something. Uh, I think that's that's the real problem and that's the crux of the issue. Um, sorry, I, uh, I'm the odd one out because I'm wearing a tie and a jacket. So I'm but I'm going to sort of say this that uh, I do agree with what Mr. Mehra said and Frank also said, but uh, every time a film goes through a post, uh, you know, post certification issue, I think that's where we face a problem. I miss a heartbeat every Thursday, every Thursday, when post a certification of a film, correct? Because I think one needs to recognize one thing that in the landscape, there is a statute and that statute authorizes the certification board. That certification board is a repository of all powers and have guidelines in terms of statute to certify films. Now, the issue that we faced in Arakshan is this, and this was exactly the point, and, and that's what we argued. Creative expression is fine, there could be parameters, that's subjective, 
that's fine. The issue really is that once a film goes through certification, and it is certified by yourselves, the, is it open for state under the garb of what they believe and say is a law and order situation to sit down and ban a film? Then, then what is the process of certification? What is the sanctity of cert certification? This is exactly what happened even in Arakshan. In Arakshan, an overnight 32 petition we filed because it was banned in six states. The principles of the certification board were followed in terms of saying you will pay heed to morality, decency, because that's the touchstone on which the statute is framed. I don't think that's an issue. You banned the film. The Supreme Court came down heavily, relying on an earlier judgment that we had appeared in in Rangaraj, and said that it is the job of the state to deal with law and order. Once there is a certification that has taken place, right? and a body and a repository which is authorized under law to do this, how is it open to do a post-certification uh, issue where you really do something known as pre-censorship even before the film comes out? So I think, though, I mean, there's a slight different view I'm, I'm expressing it to, uh, to you in terms of the issues that we've had. You can't have a situation once a, a board and an authority which is vested with power and this is what the judgment of the Supreme Court said in an overnight 32 petition that we drafted really sitting on a plane landed in Delhi and then moved the Supreme Court. We were compelled to do that because six states took an action on the basis of whatever representation, despite the fact the certification had taken place. Tomorrow, even when you see the issue related to 8th Dai, which uh, we are aware of, the issue really is, is there any power under any statute once you have an authority which is going to view films for anybody else to look into it? Is that, is that the regime that you want to set? This does not put out of context the fact that there must be a limitation, there must be a reasonable restriction. But that test of reasonable restriction is, is prescribed under the statute and there is an authority vested with power to deal with that. What you don't want is post-certification interference of any authority under the garb of law and order. That's exactly what happened in our action. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to know, Mr. Naik, one more thing. On behalf of the board, and I'm sure people all here want to know, you said that once the film is certified, then of course no one has the right to object. But right now I want to know because I sit there for certification. What do I do? Can I, what, what, what does the constitution say? I mean about use of these, because the SAST commission who I have faced and the chairman, uh, it's a, you know it's a statutory body and the chairman told me during the election that, uh, that if I do not want to be addressed by a particular name. अगर मुझे ये नाम पसंद नहीं है तो आप हमें कैसे कह सकते हैं? अगर हमें नहीं पसंद है कि आप हमें धोबी मोची नाई कहें, तो आप हमें उस नाम से कैसे बुला सकते हो? और फिल्म वाले कैसे यूज़ कर सकते हैं? आप सोचें, आप सोचें कि आप किस दूसरे तरीके से बता सकते हैं? लेकिन आप हमें उस न what shall we do? I'll answer it in two bullet points for you. Yes. First, once you have viewed a film, you have representatives from all classes in accordance with your statute, so you represent a strata of society. The film certification board is not an empty body and therefore there are representations from every, every class. You made a really important point just two minutes before. What did you say? You said that historically, this is available in literature, this is available in every other data, so it is available in the public domain. Why is it that a filmmaker, and there are two points connected here, can't express, and what that expression could be is subjective, can be tested, and can be decided by the, the certification. The larger issue that you're raising is that once you are vested with the power, does any commission have authority to raise the issue is a legal question, and, and, and as a lawyer, and as a constitutional lawyer, I would only say this, that absolutely not. They don't give the power to the board. They don't have the representations. They don't put the guidelines. See, this statute is all pervading. There is a principle laid down under this statute, which you follow on a daily basis. And I think the certification board does a tremendous job in applying its mind. Also, contemporary cinema is different. Contemporary cinema is quite different from what it was historically and what it is now. And I think that principle is enshrined in this statute even to this day. Today, even your new amendments that are there is in furtherance of this statute. Otherwise, every certification would be challenged, and you challenge the certification. 
Right. Thank Don't you. invite films to or be in a situation where the certification can be tested much before it goes into the public domain. So if anybody has an issue, it doesn't happen last minute on a film. Right. When the prints are Right. So the act, as you said, with the act says that no other, no SCST commission or uh, National Commission for Women, no commission has the right to protest or object to certification once it is done because the act gives the board the power to decide on the certification or, or on approval of the content. And the act says that while deciding, board ko ye dhyan mein rakhna hai ki kisi ki sensibility hurt na ho. So, we have to say that 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 we have to say There is this film called Deswa where uh, uh, you know, the film is not about caste. The film is about something else, but uh, there, there is a conversation that goes where uh, the elder brother says, uh, to the younger brother ki tum niche jaat ki ladki ke saath bhag gaya aur kya something like that now when this film came for certification we just asked the director that is it possible that we say ki dusri jaat ki ladki ke saath bhag gaya why should we call niche jaat or unchi jaat can't we just say ki koi aur jaat will it affect the story the director said that not really what i want to establish is that he is more feeling uh, worse because it was Nichi Jat. But then he agreed to make it um, make it Dusri Jat, which was the second best option. But we agree that we had to force him to do that because at the back of the mind, I have the SCST commission always sitting. objection So this is how, all I'm trying to say that uh, there is such a fine balance and the tight rope walking that the board is always doing. But the board on its own is trying to uh, see to it that the sensibilities are not offended. With that, I'll uh, come to Mr. Lavranjan. Uh, his film, Pyar Ka Panchanama. Now, like someone introduced him and said, that took a very fresh uh, look on uh, uh, women. And uh, in his film, I mean, he has shown that women are uh, not such cute creatures that we believe them to be. And, uh, and and there, there, is a ta there was a dialogue I, I remember because the film came to he came with a complaint to me that uh, why can't I use this line? There was a line, and since we are talking about sensibilities, we are talking about gender sensibilities too. Uh, ki the, the, this guy he talks about his boss. Ki uh, sali lipstick laga ke aajati hai, to bhot smart samasti apne aap ko. Ha? Or uh, sorry, he will tell you about the dialogue which we thought was not right at all. Let's start with this. Now, see, uh, I'll come to this. When I was reading the topic of discussion, be the offended. I really like the title of the discussion. Because I always believe that uh, there's a big problem with us as a country. We get offended very easily. Why do we get offended? Like, how does this start? I think people get offended when they don't agree with something, when we disagree. But that is not the only thing which makes you get offended. When you disagree with something, and then when you don't understand it, and you're not ready to understand it, you don't have the patience for it, you don't want a discussion. So what is the easiest thing to do? Get offended. How do we tackle it? I mean seriously, in a country of, with this kind of population, so anything can offend anyone or I would rather say that everything will offend someone or the other. I mean people will get offended by Mahabharat ki Gandhari ko kya tha? Dhatrash ko andha kyo kya diya? Ab baat ye ki Mahabharat mein dikhaya hi hai na ki andha nahi kehna chahiye. Aap ye bhi to dekhe ki jo kaha ja raha hai wo kyun kaha ja raha hai? जैसे बात अभी ये हुई कि कोई चाहता नहीं है कि नीची जाति क्यों बोला जा रहा है बात ये कि दिक्कत तब है आप ऑफेंस कर लीजिए जब नीची जाति कहने के बाद ये कहा जा रहा हो कि नीची जाति ही कहना चाहिए या वो नीची जाति ही है लेकिन अगर फिल्म का फाइनल मैसेज ये है कि जाति ऊंची नीची नहीं होती है तो उसमें ऑफेंस लेने वाली बात नहीं है क्योंकि इवेंचुअली उसमें कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि 
आप सोसाइटी में नीची जाति शब्द यूज नहीं करते और हम यूज कर रहे हैं हम तो दिखाने की कोशिश ये कर रहे हैं ना कि आप यूज करते हैं आज भी आपके घरों में जो काम करने वाले लोग आते हैं क्या आप उन्हीं उनको उसी क्लास में पानी पिलाते हैं जिसमें आप खुद पीते हैं कितने घरों में पिलाते हैं और कितनों में नहीं पिलाते हैं तो अगर आप अपने बच्चों से ये कह सकते हैं कि इनको पानी दूसरे क्लास में देना तो फिर इतनी टॉलरेंस रखिए कि आप वो चेहरा अपना देख पाए जैसे मेरी फिल्म ने जो बात अभी इन्होंने कही कि बात ये थी कि लिपस्टिक लिपस्टिक लगा के आ जाती है सारी अच्छा अब क्या है वो एक जिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में वो सीन था जब मैंने लिखा था तब भी मैंने ये नहीं सोचा था कि मैंने इंटेंशनली ये लिखा है एक फीमेल बॉस के लिए वो एक बॉस के लिए लिखा हुआ सीन था जिसमें एक आदमी अपनी फ्रस्ट्रेशन निकाल रहा था टूवर्ड हिस्स बॉस अगर शायद लड़के के लिए लिखा होता तो ये लिखा होता कि साला हर समय लड़कियों के पीछे दो मिलाता घूमता रहता है काम वाम कुछ करता नहीं है सारा काम हमें करना पड़ता है लेकिन हम बहुत ज्यादा टची हैं इस बात को लेके कि हम ये बात समझने को तैयार नहीं है कि इवेंचुअली बॉस एक लड़की है वो आदमी भड़ास निकाल रहा है उसको जस्टिफाई नहीं कर रहा था मैं लेकिन जब आदमी भड़ास निकालता है तो गलत चीजें ही बोलता है सही कहा आपने कि क्यों नहीं क्रिटिसाइज करे क्यों एक क्यों नहीं प्रेजेंट करे सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने काफी समय पहले और जिसके बेसिस पे हमने आरक्षण की जजमेंट की यही लिखा और मैं ये पढ़ना चाहता हूं कि डेमोक्रेसी इज अ गवर्नमेंट बाय द पीपल बाय अ ओपन डिस्कशन द डेमोक्रेटिक फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इटसेल्फ डिमांड्स इन इट्स सिटीजंस एन एक्टिव एंड इंटेलिजेंट पार्टिसिपेशन इन द अफेयर्स ऑफ द कम्युनिटी द पब्लिक डिस्कशन विद पीपल्स पार्टिसिपेशन इज अ बेसिक फीचर एंड अ रैशनल फॉर डेमोक्रेसी व्हिच डिस्टिंग्विशेस इट फ्रॉम ऑल द फॉर्मेट्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट द डेमोक्रेसी कैन नाइदर वर्क नो प्रॉस्पर अनलेस पीपल गो आउट टू शेयर देयर व्यूज नाउ वी हैड एन इशू बिल्कुल इसी पे बेसिस पे चक्रव्यू में देयर वाज अ सॉन्ग एंड फॉर्चूनेटली एज़ फार एज़ द सर्टिफिकेशन बोर्ड इज कंसर्न इट हैज बीन वेरी कॉशियस इट हैज सेड दैट यू पुट डिस्क्लेमर्स वेयर नेसेसरी एंड रिक्वायर्ड एंड आई थिंक दोस डिस्क्लेमर्स आर सेल्फ रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट द इश्यूज हैव बीन एड्रेस्ड बाय योरसेल्फ्स आल्सो सो इवन इफ इट्स एन एससी इशू even if it's a lie you see the disclaimer even in ekta dian which came about by way of a suggestion from the certification board and what is a condition for actually grant of the certification so birla ho ya tata ambani ho ha bata was a class this uh, definition despite the certification and despite the disclaimer some individuals chose to file petitions in the delhi high court and we ultimately succeed because we said that is a form of expression and that's this is the basis on which we like so ultimately expression is subjective but the court your constitution allows you to do that so long as you have adequate disclaimers and so long as you're not castigating any particular thing and you are disclaiming it to some extent that's no problem and the expression of views should be there sorry to intrude intrude the eminent panel at this point in time we have the renowned filmmaker amongst us mr ketan mehta he welcomes the green panel of all मेहता with a bouquet of flowers <laughs> thank you very much sir for giving me a chance thank you for joining us would you like to say something or give any choice or pardon my intrusion that's all i can say at the moment uh, let me join the So thank you, um, Amit. That was good. Uh, there's another thing uh, about uh, sensibilities. Although I am a government servant and it's going to get controversial, but I am going to ask Ira Bhaskar, who was there in Chakrabiu, that everybody gets offended. I'll tell you. Sometimes government also gets offended. They also wa don't want that government agencies should be portrayed in bad light. So and I think that the same happened with uh, I. Um, Uh, Ranveer Basanti, there was 
An issue with uh, Indian Air Force. Uh, um, would you would you like to tell us about that? Then we'll get to Ira and Shita. Yeah, uh, we made a movie uh, with essentially kind of uh, and one of the plot points in the film, which was the turning point of the film, was the MiGs were crashing, uh, MiG 21 aircrafts. And this was uh, based on, I'm from my Air Force school, so I've been to a lot of air shows. And then when I read this report about mix crashing, it, I had to express it in my work because I was moved. And we were losing young pilots, young sons of the country, let's say. And the then defense minister, in an interview, he uh, actually wore a G suit and took a flight in a MiG and declared it a, as a very safe plane. And then he also went ahead to say that these people are not in So that really got me angry. So we didn't do it in film. But we couldn't have gone to the ministry to take permission. So we created digitally uh, manufactured planes digitally manufactured uh, uh, airfields and air force stations and so we shot and I knew that hum log shayad ki maan mein ghus rahe film bani dikhai hume sensor mila approval kyunke uh, delicate matter tha it was subject to defense ministry uh, the Defense Ministry saw it and promptly there were some 12 changes. He's Defense Minister for Defense Minister Manpolo, MIG for MIG Manpolo, Indian Air Force for Indian Air Force Manpolo. Uh, <laughs> so I stopped reading it after the fourth point. I said, yes, yeah, boring. Abhi kya to, polite letter, no sir. Hum to aise boling. <laughs> Ministry of Defense is a very intimidating place. <laughs> because they are your heroes, they are protecting the country. And I am not making fun. I am from an Air Force school. And my real life heroes are the defense people of this country. Because so selflessly they are giving their, uh, their sons and daughters. So, ये नहीं होने वाला सर, ये तो ऐसा ही हो रहा है, and इसका background ये है, there are there's coffins and I mean the flying coffins and all that, and TV show and this is the CAG report, 2000 करोड़ का कुछ इसमें मामला हुआ है, and since Russia was broken, it became चचनिया ये वो ये वो करके, तो the parts were distributed, पहले वहाँ से आता था, तो सब एक QC होता था, अब सब शुरू हो गए so this is not going to happen, this is wrong with the country. And our children are dying, so this is not going to happen. Okay, so now they are going to be moral quandary because whatever we were saying was right. So they approached their defense minister. They are not going to be very ideal, they are not going to be. So come to Delhi, show us the film. We came to uh, to the auditorium, the Madhav Auditorium. Uh, the DM of the country, now the President, uh, the Chief of Army, Chief of Air Force, Chief of Navy, and their ADCs, and the second in staff, the third in staff, because when the Defense Minister is there. <coughs> Fortunately, they came with their wives. <laughs> Like this, I was to present the film. I got up and my legs were shaking. Shaking not because the film ka kya hoga. Wo film ban gai jo hona wo hoga uska. Uska koi problem Because the chief of army, navy, air force was there and defense minister was there and I said, sir, this is the proudest moment of my life. <laughs> You're going to see my film. I'll never get this audience ever. Or uh, film ho gaya. 
the DM said, the last film I saw was Jal Sagar. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my job is to protect the country, not to censor films. It's a nice film, uh, Young Boy, What's Your Name and all. Karke. I leave it to three of you, any of you. Very good. Right, they're just fine. It was absolutely correct. And, uh, so, the chief of army and the chief of navy looked at the chief of air force. He said, you're the plane ki baate kar Tu hi samal is. Toh hum log baithe udar. Sab kuch hua. So, he said, yeah, uh, you want to not say make 21, everything else is fine. I said, no sir, but we are losing kids. He said, I know, I've done your background check and all. You are from air force school and blah, blah, blah. So you are sensitive to it and you've shown it in a very good way. Uh, I said, then what's the problem? He said, what do I tell the mothers of the sons who are going to fly this plane tomorrow morning and go out on a sortie? I said, this is a very genuine problem. I said, why don't we change the, the, the make planes? He said, yeah, we really want to do it, but it's going to cost us $16 billion. If, if we have to overnight change it, we are phasing them out, we are changing it, the trigger mechanism is a problem. Yes, sir, I vote. So, what do we do? The wives got up, they said, are you crazy? Such a nice son this boy has made and you are trying to do this. So, the wives are the bosses, I realize. <laughs> so, it all became a, a much, it wasn't a me, me, you, you. It was us kind of a discussion. What do we do? And so we said, okay, we'll put a play card in the end, which came from them. And you say the numbers which have gone down. So we had put a play card which said like 44 MiG aircrafts have gone down. So he said, no, no, your numbers are wrong. So OPR wale ko bula, okay, wing commander, please tell them the correct numbers and the correct. The numbers went 10x. <laughs> <laughs> and the film got released because he was also in a hot seat. The censor board was in a hot seat. It was a national thing and everyone behaved in a very matured fashion. Everybody around. And the government came down. They took very quick action. Very quick means you such great dignitaries who are running the country's defense. Within a week, understanding the financial problems that we are in the middle of publicity and all that. And 21st Jan was the release. It just got shifted by a week because of, not because of the defense thing, because of the animal welfare board. That was another story. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, and soon enough, the Air Force invited me and uh, they honored me on the 75 years of Air Force. They gave me some trophy, something, something, some badge, one, this thing, to say that you made a very sensitive film for the Air Force and uh, they were happy. Uh, there were so many mothers who called me who had lost their children and their sons. And uh, uh, there was a lot of blessing from them. I think that's why the film kind of worked because the heart was correct. But Animal Welfare Board, I do mil So that, that they are also one of the offended ones. They get offended by just anything. <laughs> so easily you, I know it's surprising, is well, there was a horse shot that was not approved by them in Rangdeva Santi till last minute and that's how the film was delayed. Now if I start telling you that it would take me an entire day, but, 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 but I'll tell you that for, for animals, even, even this uh, film, the, Ajay Devgan uh, is on a horse. I think it's a uh, son of son. Yeah, and the horse, yeah, the crossing, uh, jumping over a car. Now they said that you you put a, a disclaimer there that this the horse actually was not made to uh, jump over the car. It it is digitally done, and and we were we were made to do that. But then the filmmakers feel that that we are trying to create a hero here. If everything is actually this is not the hero. This is actually the body double. Yes, yeah, sure. 
sorry sorry to interrupt but uh, on the part of the film industry uh, we are the bigger culprits here because you should see the way the animals are treated absolutely wo sher ka shot ho raha hai uska munh kar denge pigeons hai uske pang baand denge they are treated very badly so the idea is to do it correctly like it's done all over the world there are enough examples there are anglers there are things that that, that system the society as you evolve you should do things what what we were made to do was hilarious and stupid that's different wo 2000 saal se wahan baisakhi ka festival hota hai wahan nirankari log ghode pe aate hain aur hum candid camera leke ja ke unko shoot kiya aur usme fir amit ko bola ki acha lagega because your character is like that are ye log kaise kar sakte main bhi kar और हाथ छोड़ के तो आ जा बड़े ही डिड दैट थिंग देर नो ट्रिक अब बोला ये क्यों दिखा मैंने कहा तो 2000 साल से चल रहा है आप उसको बैन करो ना वहाँ जाके आप बोल बोल के तो दिखाओ वहाँ पंजाब में निरंकारियों को बैन करो बस कृपा नहीं है तो फाइनली मी एन आमिर सैट एन ए सेट यार ये निकाल हमने कहा ऐसा करते हैं now let's say no 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 and then say okay we'll take it out and that short was under the prevention of cruelty to animals act and said sorry you're freeing the birds he said it's a cruelty therefore even in terms of that statute there's a complete misuse of power and misdirection where under the garb of saying that cruelty to animals in a film is is worse off or better off versus what really happens in reality and that's not the power it's really taking care of animals and seeing what you want to do so therefore even that statute is completely misused and hopelessly misused for uh, every single thing in the films animal welfare board sir ne to phir bhi shoot kiya hai ghode ke sath ek ghode pe hero baithe hain mujhe kis cheez ka khayal rakhna pada tha meri film mein koi lena dena nahi janwar us koi janwar hai nahi goa ke ek resort mein हीरो हीरोइन का शूट कर रहे हैं सीन पीछे से एक बिल्ली गुजर गई मेरी बिल्ली नहीं है <laughs> बिल्ली मेरे कंट्रोल में नहीं है मैंने डाली नहीं मैं तो ये सोच रहा हूँ इसकी पासिंग अगर आ गई है तो ये कंटिन्यूटी कैसे मेंटेन होगी लेकिन उसका भी आपको ध्यान रखना पड़ता है कि अगर आप एक गली में शूट कर रहे हो पीछे कहीं कुत्ता दिख रहा है गली में कुत्ते हैं मैं गली के कुत्तों को कैसे कंट्रोल कर लूंगा तो आपको डिस्कलेवर चाहिए आपको परमिशन चाहिए एवेंचुअली डिस्कशन के बाद क्या करना पड़ा मुझे मुझे शॉर्ट चेंज करना पड़ा फिल्म अटकी है मेरी क्यों क्योंकि वो बिल्ली मेरे कंट्रोल में नहीं है एनजी शॉट यूज करना पड़ा क्यों क्योंकि वो बिल्ली की पासिंग है सर बैकग्राउंड मतलब मेरे लिए ये बैकग्राउंड है कि यहां एक्टर्स खड़े हैं पीछे से जितनी दूर आप हैं वहां से बिल्ली की बट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू है बोर्ड देर बिकॉज not just as filmmakers as a society the way we treat the animals we are not friendly to them is very very important to have it uh, but let's not make a mockery of it that's all i was saying thank you and i'm about could we have mr sudhir mishra with us here <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Misha. You have a huge fan following, as you can see. Uh, uh, in in Chakravyu, uh, the government agency that was not shown in a good light, as they say popularly. So they were uh, there was a feeling that that the film was made, and they were more sympathetic to the Naxals and. the the police officers who were fighting them or the other paramilitary forces were shown in bad light i was when ira bhaskar was uh, uh, certifying that film i was sitting with her only to ensure that she cuts those scenes i don't know i am a government officer i am not going to let you pass these scenes where all these poor guys you know the crpf and all those people they leave their families behind they're fighting for us they go there no one talks about them no one sympathizes with them here the filmmaker is sympathizing with naxals and you going to allow that so i i was sitting with her to ensure but finally when the film got over and we we in fact sat and discussed and we felt that the intention was not that and it was clear so would you just like to say that why is that you know the and i'm saying that does the government agencies do have the right sometime 
not to get offended, but to feel that they are not represented properly sometimes. I'm not talking about the corrupt police officers who are shown in film, not about that. But I sometimes feel about these paramilitary forces, you know, who are fighting in Kashmir, fighting in all these remote Naxal areas. No one makes a hero out of them, no one talks about them. Everybody has sympathy uh, with the outlaw. And as, as a member of the board, don't you sometimes feel guilty about the fact that, you know, they are being misrepresented? I didn't feel that in this case because this this is a film which is not a pro Naxal film actually the review you know it's a film that is um, if it um, owes allegiance to anything it owes allegiance to the fact that there are um, poverty stricken uh, completely disempowered people whose lands and whose property and uh, basically lands and their livelihoods because they can't live anywhere else are being taken over by big business and that the state is really nearly accepting this and is not doing enough. That is the um, political intent of the film. The film is equally critical of Naxals. It's critical of Naxal violence. It's critical of corruption within the Naxal um, group. And uh, the real issue, uh, I mean, when we were, um, it was, this was a revising committee meeting because the examining committee had recommended certain cuts. The filmmaker did not agree and immediately asked for a revising. And that's the discussion that Pankaj is talking about. I was the board member for the, um, on, um, you know, in um, chairing that, uh, that meeting and Pankaj was with me. So the issue, you know, I agree with you. I mean, I, I don't think that... Uh, uh, my attitude would be that, um, uh, as a blanket, that the um, uh, that government agency should be, you know, are all corrupt, or that they should be. And I'm, by the way, a defense doctor as well. So I do have, uh, you know, and, and a product of a defense school as well. And my your husband too is. Was, was yes, 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 yes. So, so I don't, I don't have those kinds of uh, reactions at all. I think we need to pay attention to the issues that are uh, the issues of the film. Issues that are being debated, issues that are being represented, issues that that the filmmakers and and the, um, yeah the filmmakers are pushing, and for me that was important. And I think what was a learning experience for me because it was my first time on the revising committee for Chapter Review was um, because I came uh, came to the revising committee saying that you know we must not um, not get involved with small little sensitivities getting hurt this that because I really don't believe we have to really understand what the real issues are. And when the song came up, and I had read the report uh, of the examining committee that had recommended that the entire Tata Ambani song should be deleted, I read the report, you know, as soon as I entered the room, the report was given, I read it, and so I was paying a lot of attention to that song when it came on, and I just felt that was completely wrong, that the, that is, the examining committee's report was wrong, and that there was no need to take the um, song out because it is a very popular protest song from the 1970s when I was a university student. And, and, it's, a, and, and it's a song that, uh, that has been written in different versions by many, so it actually doesn't have a right. So for me, that was the real issue. And I felt that actually the police officer was, was represented, that is, uh, Jun Rampal's character was actually represented quite sympathetically. And that his internal conflicts were actually debated, um, uh, I mean, were, were sympathetically portrayed. And uh, ultimately, of course, I mean, I but told But he shoots Anjum, his own friend who almost Anjum, I told Anjum yes. later on that, you know, I have an issue with, with uh, you know, the... That's not the, positive portrayal at all. No, but right through until that moment. Yes. And I, I, he may have to shoot his friend, but a little ba a bit of conflict about it would have been uh, more, more to the, you know, okay. um, yeah, Thank more, you. more in order. And for me, the song was really the issue. And there I learned from you. Yes. that uh, I, can, I can take a very radical kind of stand over there, yes. but it's important to keep certain sensitivities in mind, yes. and therefore the disclaimer yes. was, a, was an option. Yes, yeah. thank you. Think, yeah. Thank, thank you, Ira, ma'am. Thank you. I would request Mr. Rajendra Singh Babu to share with us uh, his experience. Uh, this. See, I had faced a very big problem. The film, Mary Awas Suno, you might have been heard. I was made to run from Bangalore to Delhi a hundred times and our prints were confiscated and uh, the information and broadcasting minister wanted this film should be banned and uh, we had made this film first in Canada. It was the first trendsetter 
a political film where a cop shoots a politician. That was the film. <laughs> film ran for 85 days, continuous uh, household, all India, the India Today, Indian Express, everywhere it was the news. The tickets were sold at 500 rupees at those days and people never used to go to the theatre. They used to force the exhibitor to continue six shows a day. So that was a kind of the film and that minister, chief minister, could not do anything because public response was good. And he requested his friend Gulab Nami Azad in Delhi to raise the issue in parliament. So once the immediately he raised in parliament, every corner, the dinosaurs started coming to us. <laughs> you know, we won the case in the Bangalore court. The deputy commissioner is such an intelligent man. When we were taking the print out, immediately after the gate, he, uh, he confiscated the print and he put one more case on us so that the film could not be released. <laughs> so when we made in Hindi, same thing happened. Mrs. Gandhi saw the film and instructions were given at any cost this film should not run. So then we had to see a great lawyer. Then Siddhartha Shankar Rai was brought from Calcutta. He was a congressman and he had left Congress. So we won the case again, the film, we did it. So finally film is a smash hit. So what I was thinking, the, the producer, director, nobody cares him in between. The, how much money he has put, how much of money he has put there, and how much of struggle, and how much of sweat, and how many people have worked there, and nobody cares for that. Four says, it is not, we have given this certificate. Kamalasan was sitting with Chidambaram, and he said, the next man, he will be the chief minister, and the madam, got angry. <laughs> and how to deal this film as censored? Till that there was no issue. No issue then. And the film has released in Karnataka and people used to come from, Bang, uh, from Chennai to uh, Bangalore to see the film. It was running in Malaysia and other places. But a small difference of opinion triggered. And finally, a small group of Minor community, they said this film. Are, the film story does not belong to India. It is a film story between Afghanistan and um, uh, America. And how Indian characters were not there. And how they made, you know, he has to literally said, I will leave this state. I will become a bankruptcy in another two days or ten days if this film is not released because he has fled this office also. So this, a maker, suffers. Who is going to guard this? Nobody. Censor board doesn't come, government doesn't come. Of course, this time, the information minister, Mr. Manoj Tiwari said that, uh, Manish Tiwari said that they will look into this and they have to do some law. Even repeatedly, Supreme Court has told nobody should interfere with states or anything, but this is ongoing problem. How to? Still, we have a fear. Say, suppose I want to make a film tomorrow between Nehru and Mount ba Mountbatten's story, Lady Mountbatten's story. Is they allowed? Is they allowed? No. They will kill me. If I want to make a film on Sonia Gandhi and Raju Gandhi's love story. No. Nobody will dare uh, to make it. They will hang us in the streets. So where is the freedom of expression? There is no freedom of expression. Sensor people took revenge on me after the three, four films of my films or chopped like anything because I could not do anything. Because the scissors were there, now it is mouse, now then it was scissors. <laughs> Sensor means scissors, now it is mouse cut. So, like this, we suffer a lot and we have got many ideas. Say, in recently in Karnataka, one film was released. A person goes from here to Yamaraj's place. It is a comedy satire and it has been, many films have been made on that uh, genre. So suddenly some temple chiefs started, our gods are shown in uh, different uh, manner and it is uh, insulting. Where is the god? Who has seen the god? How to decorate? See, suppose we make a film on Shivaji, we have Shivaji. Who knows Rama, how he was? It is only an imagination we do it. 
and suddenly people started throwing stone burning the theater and they, they, some group went to mr nagraj and they gave a memorandum you are given a certificate this to recall the certificate see it is all become a tamasha see in the name of democracy we don't have say a english film where all the president men passion of christ like the films are made there now in india still the time is not matured we have to fear either the small groups and that to money you know morning they will go near the theater and the night they will call we are going to the theater how much money you will give us these kind of these kind of small groups how who is going to control madam jayalalitha said i could not give law and order question so i will give a small example our dr rajkumar was kidnapped by virapan the chief minister of karnataka went to court and said we are not in a position to give law and order immediately supreme court said if you are not in a position to handle law and order you resign and go he said resign and go the same should have been told to uh, tamil nadu government yes. they are not told no nobody will tell unnecessarily in this the producer and director they will go very literally they will go down and all their dreams will be shattered they will not make any kind of film again they will come to a, a run and mill story four songs and two fights and they make film so this is the position so we have to see that what mr nayak said the board should be supreme authority whatever it is there we are ready to discuss and we have responsibility we have families we have brothers sisters wives we make the film that they should also see the film with us and we have the responsibility we are always ready to cooperate with censor but not with this gundas and some politician he doesn't uh, see, and they want to harass us and threaten us so this should be first a given the freedom of expression that is the justification for the freedom of the exhibition thank you things first of all after the shirupam case the minister of information and broadcasting mr manish tiwari he has set up an expert committee which is headed by justice uh, mukul mutta ex justice of punjab and haryana court and uh, he the expert committee is going to look into how the boards uh, hands will uh, are going to be strengthened because the board has proved uh, many time that it is autonomous as far as decision making is concerned and board's word should be the last word on certification second thing about the story is the love story that you want to make i'm telling you you bake the story and bring it to us we will certify that's a promise <laughs> that's a promise yes i can't promise whether you'll be alive after that or not but that's <laughs> certificate we will let you show the film that that sports <laughs> promise another? sports member all of them are sitting here on behalf of the i don't know how many of you have seen midnight children where uh, mrs uh, mrs indira gandhi has been shown in such a bad light and uh, they are close up of this woman who you know actually help i mean uh, very very bad light is all i can say and uh, when we cleared the film we did not give a single cut to the film and the film was cleared and the some journalists uh, they saw the film and they called me and they said aap bag pack kar lo aap jaane wale ho so i asked why he said ki aapne kya kya clear kiya hai aapko midnight children mein aapko malum hai kiski sarkar hai abhi ministry se aapko call aane hi wala hoga but uh, i i knew ministry was never going to call no one was ever going to uh, call me and say that you know you know you have to because because it's congress government so you cannot show mrs gandhi in a bad light we have cleared that film and all of you who have seen the film will and i mean at least should vouch for the fact that uh, cbfc is autonomous as far as decision making is concerned and there is no government interference so please go ahead and make as many love stories as you want <laughs> yes uh, i would request mr gaitan mehta to say share his experience
all my films at some point of time either has had a problem with the sensor board or with some group or the other. Uh, starting with my first film, Bhavni Bhavai, which was a film about the problems of the untouchables, a folklore, a comic folklore. And it started with an Achut calling himself Achut. You know, uh, it's a film talking about his problems. He's actually talking about his condition. Uh, and there were problems. I mean, this is 1980s, early 80s. Finally, it was resolved. I've had to go to the revising committee again and again and again. Fortunately, somewhere the sense prevailed in the revising committee and it was passed off. Even in the last film of mine called Mangal Pandey, there were just about 76 cases or something filed across, uh, against the film all across India. For things like, how can you show Mangal Pandey, who was a great uh, uh, freedom fighter, and show him drinking bhang? Uh, why haven't you shot in Balia, where he was born. You know, these are the kind of issues that were raised and the problems created. A film, a political satire a, a, uh, that I did long ago called Oh Darling Yeah India. I had a scene where uh, a, the, the nation is being auctioned by the political leader saying that this country was owned by uh, a company 150 years ago, we know how much profit that company made and now it's time to sell it all, uh, all over again. So it will be sold to the highest bidder. I thought it was a wonderful tongue-in-cheek kind of a uh, reflex, uh, reflection on what was happening at that point of time. And there were threats. I was called anti-national, unpatriotic uh, and all that. I mean, there were possessions against the film and things like that. So yes, in India we are either very sensitive or very opportunistic. There are groups which will take an opportunity and turn it into a showbiz tamasha, where the, the, the basic intention is not to object against the film but to attract attention to themselves. Or uh, there are politicians of all hues are extremely sensitive people. And they are so extra sensitive that any kind of a criticism is not acceptable to them at all. The third thing is we have actually somewhere lost the sense of humor. We can't even laugh at, about, at ourselves. Now that can be the that can't be a bigger tragedy in a civilization where you can't laugh at yourself. So I personally believe, uh, as a practicing artist for the last more than a quarter of a century, that freedom of expression is my birthright, and nobody can challenge it. I won't let anyone challenge it at all. If you have to, to raise your objection, please raise it in a civilized, civil manner, just as I am doing. You know? But freedom of expression in any civilized society has to be a birthright. Without it, there is no civilization, there is no culture, there is no art. I would like to ask the organizers how much time do we have to take questions because there is a screening going on after this. Can we, 15 minutes. So can we, uh, we uh, he would like to ask a question Mr. Labranjan. After that we will take, quickly take questions from the audience. I would like to ask this question actually to you and to the other two senior filmmakers because you know, you've been around for so long. Now, like uh, Rakesh ji said that he, when he faced the case, it was a genuine, genuine concern from the department which was concerned. And uh, he handled it the way it was handled. Now, whenever you guys have made films like these, and there have been petitions, I'm sure you must have come across a scenario where you could make out that these are the genuine concerns and these are the ones which are just for the heck of it, or you know, as you said, trying to gain attention towards it. So, now, like a, for a new filmmaker like me, at times you get stuck in a scenario where there are so many other considerations to be taken care of. I'm sure the money in your case is, is much bigger. I mean, but probably the kind of support system also you guys have is much stronger. So, what do you do when you don't have that kind of a support system? And how do you take it forward from there? Because my whole thing is that if I'm offending someone, 
I am ready to have a discussion. But my whole thing is don't try to scare me. So how do you... Just, just be fearless, yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> Uh, it's your choice you made and if you are saying things which are bold uh, uh, and you, that's a choice you made, so be, just be ready for it, that's it. Maximum kya hoa, film ban hai ki aur kya? Give me a number after the discussion. <laughs> Expression. It's extremely imperative that a lot of films now in scripts where there is a little bit of pre advisory, uh, you know, this thing that you can take. So it's prevention. Again, the, the real problem is that this whole power to ban a film, like what you were saying, is a power that exists under the local cinema regulations. But that power is a power post exhibition and not pre exhibition. So the real problem that we are having is that unless the film is exhibited, and this is what Supreme Court said in Arakshan in Shankarappa, which we argued, and said that once the expert body has considered the impact of the film on the public and has cleared the film, it is no excuse to say that there may be a law and order situation. Yeah, that's very so, so this whole local cinema regulations, whether it happened in Vishwarupa or it happened in any other film, is a situation which is because there is no prescription in law for pre-censorship. We are getting into the regime under the garb of saying that there are local cinema regulations and there's a so-called law and order situation to pre-censor a film. Where is the power? That's the problem. That's the real problem. Sometimes the censor board uh, 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 blocks the film, sometimes the hooligans block the film, sometimes politicians uh, uh, politicians block the film, and sometimes uh, the market blocks the film. <laughs> That's what happens. That's a very really sad you know? thing because it is a beautiful masterpiece you made. Thanks a lot. And I, I, I must say something in favor of the censor board. I mean, uh, the film was about creative expression, uh, a film on Raja Ravi Verma's life, yes. and the fact that he painted the Indian gods and goddesses and he painted some nudes and there were problems a hundred years ago which we are seeing all over again, we have seen recently in uh, our times as well. Uh, there were uh, the, some uh, initial screenings had problems with the censor board but the moment it went to the revi revising committee it was passed without any cut without any uh, yes. and uh, I mean, that was so so heartening that even the, the censor board is changing. It's so so it's still waiting to see it. I, I have one point to make. I don't know why people still refer to it as the censor board. Because that era of censorship is past and passe. It is now a certification board, if, if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah, we Which, are offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Yeah. We, we, but it is, but you, you, are, you are a certification board. You have a tall order because you're dealing with every section of society. I think every board member faces a challenge because everything is post facto. So this is a certification board. The era of censorship is, ar is archaic. And it is a certification board that exactly what these... Sir, since there are only 15 minutes for questions, maybe you should want to listen to some of us as well. A very one-sided story here. That's very problematic. Um, that's the whole point of our representation that uh, you want to speak on their behalf as well. Secondly, uh, sort of uh, cheeky question, is it true that there are some filmmakers who want a censorship controversy, offense controversy for free and cheap publicity? Yeah, uh, I'll take the first one. Uh, second one was for me. Okay. The first one is, uh, see, yes, it's it can be a balanced panel, uh, that's fine, point taken, uh, but you have to see the intention of the maker and that is quite evident. So that comes across in the film. Since I, uh, just, just, I just wanted to add, since I constituted the panel, I'd like to say that the, uh, Mr. Amit Naik was called, as I said earlier, he's an expert on this. So it is not uh, the constitution which, is, which does not take sides. He is representing that here. So there is no one. It's just the filmmakers and what the constitution says. 
that's all. Uh, and um, uh, like we said, that we we are um, we are dealing with that. What is the position of the law? That's all we want to know vis-a-vis -vis the filmmakers and the audience. Regarding your second question, uh, it was uh, said about me once in a very small report that how come you have problem with censors? You've made two films and both the films you have problem with censors. Now I'll tell you, I had no interest in any publicity. I didn't even get any publicity. But sometimes you do face problems and I told, I'll tell you what problem I faced in my first film. I sent it for the examining committee, it didn't pass. Went to the revising, it didn't pass. Went into re-revising. I showed my screen my film three times in Bombay, it didn't pass. I got in touch with uh, Ms. Leela Samson and uh, she called me to Chennai with the film. Went to Chennai, screened the film. She saw the film. She had a discussion. She passed everything which was a problem. And we had a discussion and she said, no, I'm absolutely fine. And all we are talking about here is not very controversial stuff. I'm talking of a couple of kisses. After it was done and she left, the regional officer in Chennai told me, Inke bolne se kya hota hai? Ye to apna kaam karke nikal gai. Jhelna humko padta hai. My film's release was five days away. And he told me very clearly that if you want a certificate tomorrow, these are the cuts. Else change your release date and do take it wherever you want to. So, no, I was not doing it for any kind of publicity. I was stuck five days before the release of the film, trying to get a certificate so that my first film could release. I can only answer for myself. So. I thought films are all about entertainment and a lot of fun. And the issues that we have discussed here today are, you know, the areas which are giving uh, a problem to certain section of the society or a social message which has been uh, either passed wrongly or taken wrongly. So where does the entertainment part of it, which is essentially what a film is all about, where does that kind of fit in? I mean, are we talking about social issues which are now uh, to be pass through the films or is it just pure entertainment or where is the balance if at all if there is any uh, film is basically a medium yeah and it can be used for whatever you like it can be used to communicate it can be used to entertain it can be used to lambast it can be used to humiliate, it can be used to do whatever you like with it. So, just to say that film is primarily entertainment, I would not subs subscribe to it. Uh, I, I feel that film is such a powerful medium that it also has, uh, uh, it can be used to communicate your ideas, uh, it can, your concerns. Uh, so, to each filmmaker his own. I would like to add one thing, also that in terms of entertainment, only if you talk about entertainment also, like the topic of the discussion, be the offended. Entertainment again is subjective. There can be a form of entertainment which will entertain a certain section and which will offend someone else. What is the problem that people are facing today is lack of tolerance towards an idea that you don't like. You can say, I am not entertained by it, but don't try to delete it, don't try to erase it. Let the people who are getting entertained by it, at least get entertained. Hello. Hello. Uh, there a question, Ketan Bhattin. You Mangal Pandey movie. It was a very awesome movie. The first question is that you have made a movie of Mangal Pandey, a historical character, a historical character. What do you think about it? 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 As it is present now. So second part, एक विवाद उसके लिए साथ स्टार्ट हुआ था कि बंदूक से जब वो छेलते रहे, कुछ उसमें सुवर की चर्बी सब में कैसे वो स्टार्ट हुआ था? Exactly clear नहीं है जब उठाना था।
Uh, I think we are digressing from the subject, but uh, Mangal Pandey, the advantage of Mangal Pandey was that very little was known about him. Uh, you know, there were historical, he's basically a footnote. Uh, you know where he was born, you know that he joined the army, and then you know that he, he rebelled. Apart from that, a personal characteristic of the character was just not available any, uh, anywhere at all. Jovi Kisne likha tha, wo conjectures the, or hypothesis the, alag alag. So, uh, I mean, uh, but there was a lot of material available on the period, on how the sepoys lived, what they felt, how they uh, uh, they fought, why they fought. All that is enough. There was enough research, uh, research material available, and we did our best. Uh, to, to take their sources from wherever they, are, uh, uh, they were available, whether it was the British Museum, British Library there, all over acro across India. And we did our homework in terms of getting the period, the ethos, uh, and the characteristics of the sepoys uh, right. Can we have the last question, please? Yeah. 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 Can I ask one question, sir? Today, we are making a 100 year cinema here. My question is to you all, that our cinema of Bhartiya is not speaking of Bhartiya cinema, but it's speaking of India's stories and India's social issues. Why are we not globally speaking of our cinema in other countries, which are an issue that we can show international issues and international issues? Why are we so obsessed with Shah Rukh, Salman and the only Indian actors? Why are we stick to our own social issues? Why you are not making a one issue which is a globally? Mr. Daniel White came here and make a film and got uh, Oscars. So why are Indian directors are not doing the same thing? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Evolves. Till now, we've been a nation just born was telling, has its uh, own stars in his eyes. Ya, wo hamare shuru ke das saal 1947 ke baad, the disillusionment aaye to escapism mein guse hum log, aur hero naachne laga, aaj tak naachay. Aur fir ek thoda economy khuli, thoda ye hua. Abhi as a country, we are not a truly global country. That's the bigger fact of it. You know, uh, so the moment India and the world when they'll come closer as such, or India will have enough magnetism like it had 4,000 years ago to attract the world to itself. It's a very economic thing, you know, uh, and uh, that's it. So once our country is a peaceful country, economically strong, there are thought leaders, there's art, culture, dance, drama, music in every street corner. The world will listen to us. Basically, minds. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, we come to an end of this discussion. We'd like to thank all of you, and we'd especially like to thank our eminent panelists here. Straight away from here, move on to the screening of the movie that most of us are also waiting for. So please be here because we're going to be starting with the screening of Dharmaputra. Straight, the late Mr. Hello, Yash Chopra. So please be seated. Those of you who are interested in the movie screening, please be here with us. Please be seated because we're going to be screening the movie.